Hi guys. I nearly said hello musicians and then I thought, oh, um, is it so much a musician's podcast now as a gaming podcast? Um, so maybe I should say hello gamers or hello coders. That's that's it, isn't it? It's really coding I'm interested in. Having said that, I am going to put up a daily news bulletin about all the game, um, you know, the latest game de- game developments that are going around. Um, and just, you know, keep keep abreast of things. I absolutely love being a coder. I absolutely am just overjoyed that at this point of my career, I found something that I can still podcast about. I can still make music for. I can still sell ringtones with, you know, the the well, basically a ringtone is going to be the same as my sound effects and the assets that I'm going to pop up. Um, as soon as I'm verified, you've got to verify yourself on Roblox, right, to um, upload and sell audio assets. Um, I, I'm i guessing you have to verify yourself to sell anything on there, but I, I can't be too sure. But certainly I've been researching audio assets um, today and yesterday, and it's just absolutely thrilling. I also made a track yesterday, and I put that on my YouTube, guys, um, and I can also put those up on as an asset. Um, so I just think it's all really come together in a, um, a hyper digital world, which, you know, for me as a, a traditional musician, I was really struggling for that bridge. I think the, the bridge that, you know, joins classical music with contemporary cutting edge designed music. There's, there's a slight difference between performed music and designed music. And of course, I'm a composer, so it's all fitting in really well. But, you know, I, I was very tired yesterday. I was, I, for various reasons, just really overtired and overstimulated. And I was doing, you know, my first coding class. And it didn't seem to be making sense. It, it seemed to be really laborious. I went with uh, King, uh, King Co- no, Code Kingdoms. <laughs> really hard for me to remember that sorry guys code king kingdoms um which teach you through a series of templates and i didn't think i was getting it and i thought this is going to take me years you know this is absolutely going to take me years i woke up this morning and there was such clarity of process in my mind and i understand exactly what i'm doing and why You know, once you understand the hierarchy of code, things become much easier. And, you know, once you remember that every single tiniest little thing, movement, um, situation, experience, uh, landscape, etc., has to be coded in individual tiny sections. Once you get that, you, you will make it much easier for yourself. But guys, do you know what? It's so similar to music. When you read music, the nuances of it, the, you know, a whole piece of music is not a whole piece of music, really. It's a sum of many, many individual codes, these black lines on a a white piece of paper. And for me, the dawning of the realisation, you know, that a piece of music is exactly like a piece of coding is, um, is just utterly superb. And I'm wondering, you know, as Fewer girls seem to be into coding. I've been thinking about that, you know, because I've got lots of granddaughters and two grandsons. Well, actually, that's an exaggeration. It's almost level pegging. But I, you know, as somebody who brought up three girls, it, I do find communicating with girls much easier. And looking at this coding, I, I felt it was very kind of blokey. And I know that sounds really sexist. I don't mean it to be, but having had my grandson over the weekend for you know those few days have really helped me understand the logistics of communicating in a boyish way and it does mean a a, a logical simplicity that is almost foolproof and foolproof so it, this is really interesting for me as a creator, and I'm really excited to have arrived at this point, even if it is only as a grandmother, 
you know, the, the realization that I can communicate. I have found a language that will allow me to bridge the gap between female and a female grandmother and a, a, a young boy. This language is going to give me a doorway to really bond and communicate. And I think that's really, really special. And I think code can do that. So I've I've woken up feeling like a, a woman who codes. I can't describe myself as a girl who codes it, I'm afraid, but I'm a woman who codes, right? And I, I'm confident that the, this new learning that I'm going to experience, it will mimic so much of my musical experience in terms of the methodology, the bricks of construction, and that I will be really very good at it because I'm very good at music. And this awakening this morning has just filled me with absolute glee. So, you know, positivity abounds. Now, the other thing which I realised yesterday, late yesterday, I was, you know, I always do a bit of research. Well, when you, when you can't sleep, you research, do you not? And, you know, the, the idea that I was going to bang out a game as quickly as I bang out a video is completely wrong and completely um, I mean, it was a self-induced philosophy. It was, you know, I didn't know what I was talking about. So taking the time to create your game, not the, the experiments. I've already got about four experiments uh, running on my Roblox account. Ro that's on Studio, Roblox Studio. Um, it, you know, it's it's really good to experiment, the same as it is really good to experiment with music, you know. Um, but to create something that is akin to what I wanted to create, so for the Rat Gang crew, um, it the I, I was sort of thinking that I'd create a video and you would step into it and then you could press buttons and go to the net to a different chapter of the video. If I want to create a game like that, that is going to take probably a decade and probably a lot of money. So I'm sim I'm really taking things back and simplifying it. But the wonderful thing about games is they don't actually have to be that complicated. You can make a very, very simple game and it can be great fun. And you can get <coughs> apologies, you can get followers and um, you know, people will buy into you. So what I'm sort of thinking to myself is if I spend the next couple of years creating very simple little games that do relate at least in the title and the broad description to my storybooks, then maybe I can get some funding to do something, you know, even more fantastic. But I'm no longer imprisoned by this idea that you have to make fantastic, really over the top, you know, Disney style productions to either make money or to learn you know that's what that's really one of the big reasons I'm doing it is to learn to be able to bond with my grandson in in a a way that he that really resonates um you know so when I'm gone he can say I used to code with my grandma I mean how bloody amazing is that just really really um I'm feeling very warm about that, actually. Um, so all of these things, uh, uh, this big learning curve and, and the realisation that you don't need to set your sights really, really high. And the wonderful thing, I suppose, about the way that we work with technology today and the way that we use bricks and we, the way we use the cloud, you, we no longer need to have massive production suites. I just researched what sort of PC or or what's the best computer for building, for coding. And it came up with my computers, that my two Macs. So, you know, my laptop and my um and my my music production Mac. Now that that was first and second, I think. And then third was a was a PC. I can't remember the name of it. But you don't need like massively sophisticated machinery hardware to create code code is actually really simple in itself the digits are simple the instructions you know you just need a typewriter much much easier with a proper um keyboard than anything else so try and get even i mean i guess you could do it on a tablet 
but maybe get a, a separate keyboard so you can just plug it in one of those I've seen those they do those I don't have one but I just think yeah already I can see you know you need your up and down and your scrolls with your mouse um, and all of that stuff so if you're going to use a tablet you're going to need a mouse and a keyboard I would suggest um, those two things very important not to test your game to test your game you can do that on your ipad on your um tablet of course you can but remember that this this podcast it will be about gaming and there'll be reviews about games etc but you know for the most part i myself personally i'm all about the coding so um yeah how exciting thank you so much for listening thank you so much for joining me and um Oh, wow. What a what a great journey we all have ahead.